welcome to DDG's February Patreon bonus episode. Yeah, it's February still, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Cool. <laughs> my name is Dave Hunt, and as always, I'm joined by Michael Swick. I know I break it by immediately referencing it, but that was your best intro to a Patreon episode ever, because it was yeah. straight to the point, <laughs> yep. and you didn't mention uh, the, the awkwardness, which I just you brought did. up. Yep. <laughs> And I don't know why I say our full names either, because like these people know who we are because they pay for this. <laughs> yeah, unless it's someone's kink to just join a brand of Patreon just to listen to what they're doing. Uh, and if you know, if you're listening to this and you know someone has that kink, just send them our link. That'd be great. That'd be yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we could really use a, a, a some sort of sugar daddy uh, for Patreon. <laughs> We can, I love that we can be a little bit less formal and robotic at the beginning of these. So, um, obviously, this is our monthly bonus Patreon episode that you all uh, pay to listen to. So that we appreciate that you are part of the seven dollar tier. Though there are a few of you, you are mighty because <laughs> you pay the most, <laughs> and we and we appreciate it. Um, so as you know, as usual, thank you so much. Um, you were able to help us to to do what we do and and make uh digital days gaming a fun hobby and and you relieve a lot of the stress you help us you know pay for podcast hosting uh you helped you know contribute towards to us getting multiple different platforms for us to be able to play games and talk games on um and it's just a, it's a big win and you allow you guys allow us to to make even like personal splurges a little differently. Like I've got a new monitor that I've got to set up and I'm able to do that because I don't necessarily have to stress about if there's a game I really want and something, you know, ridiculous happens. Like we can, we, we can buy the game or we can do, you know, whatever we need to do or if something breaks I or a microphone breaks. I upgraded my microphone. Or, yeah. Yeah. So well, I did a little because, finessing uh, with yeah. the microphone, but, but, <laughs> but definitely Patreon help. Yeah. The, you are our safety net and we, and you know, our, our, our the, the airbag and the car that, um, where you, hopefully you're never needed, but you're, it's always nice that you're there. <laughs> so we appreciate that. Um, but uh, so, uh, as always, feedback is always appreciative. Uh, appreciative, whatever. I can't say that word lately. Um, appreciated. And then uh, topic suggestions as well. Um, if you guys submit a topic that you'd like us to talk about, it'll probably go to the top of the list because we run out of topics fast. <laughs> so, when is that um, Mighty Ducks episode or that TV <laughs> show coming so we can soon. talk all about yeah, Mighty Ducks? Soon. soon. So um, this is one I almost was tempted to tell you to get Josh because we were going to be recording late enough and he would have a great conversation about this. But I think I thought it would be a little bit too much of short notice to get him on. So, yeah, and, and I also, don't like putting uh, him behind a paywall. So. Yeah, exactly. Josh is a, yeah. a man of the people. Yeah, I don't like putting him behind a paywall. So, um, but uh, reason being that I thought Josh would be a great person to have on here is that we are going to talk about best of last generation. And as most of you that are still listening know, the best of last generation for Michael and myself is going to be PlayStation. So it's going to be heavily focused on PlayStation. Uh, at least my list is. I assume his is. Yeah, there's some <laughs> PC in there, kind of, but mostly PlayStation. Yeah. So um, we're going to talk about uh, the, the the best games that we played last generation. Um, and it looks like that was about a seven-year generation. I think November 2013. Is that right? Yeah. And it's still it's still going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I looked it up. It was like November 2013 uh, yeah. was when the PS4 came out. And I think was it the week before or the week after is when the Xbox uh, One yeah. came out. So the, in, in November of 2013, both yeah. Xbox and PlayStation released their newer consoles, uh, PS4 and Xbox One. So, um, so we're gonna go back and forth a little bit. I think I'm guessing we might have one or two games that are similar, possibly, but I don't know. I don't know his. He doesn't know mine, except for like one or two games on there. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna get one off the bat right away, just off, uh, you know, off, off the table. It's uh, it's it's Destiny. Uh, it's not Destiny Two. It's Destiny. Um, and the reason being that Destiny changed me uh, as a person, uh, as a gaming hobbyist, uh, substantially. It is, it started, um, breaking out of my social shell a little bit. I was playing a lot of single player games. I was playing a lot of sports games. Um, I was originally writing for PS nation as a, um, just as kind of like a, like an adult fatherly figure of like perspective of games on kids. Like that was the initial goal of why I came there and not knowing if I was or wasn't going to like destiny. I had never played halo. Um, and then it drove me to build the community that we, that we built that is a, uh, a pillar for digital days as well. One of the many pillars, but a pillar, 
Um, it got me into doing like video tips videos. It got me into doing podcasting a little bit more. It got me into writing feature articles. It just expanded me as a, as a gaming critic writer. I don't even know what the heck to call me. Um, just evolving how I did things. I did my first ever on camera interviews. I did my first ever preview sessions. I did my first ever like impressions. Like, I mean, there's a lot of first ever stuff that I did from a writing or content creation standpoint that all went back to destiny. Um, and it's still something that obviously that I play to this day. Um, but it did significantly change how I game, um, and how I look at, at, at games, um, as well as, um, broadening my perspective um, as as a gamer, and it did a lot for the gaming platform as well. Uh, what Bungie was able to accomplish in terms of essentially kind of starting or rounding rounding games as a service off pretty well on the consoles in terms of like uh, of growing content of not releasing a new full new sequel of a game every year like they didn't annualize the franchise they they started to annualize expansions um good bad or indifferent however you do or don't feel about them and and you know doing some certain things and they learned a lot of things and they changed a lot of things and they're still doing that um but it just had a very significant impact on me and it still has an impact on me so yeah i mean i was that was very influential for your game and uh definitely something that is something that you know You'll probably, in 10, 20 years, you'll be like, I remember Destiny. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what this category is all about, or this subject I don't think matter. I'm ever going to forget it, honestly. It's been, you know, it's going six or seven years, and even with the news they released out, they released this week with some of the stuff going on with that game, It's it looks like it might be another six or seven years at least. You hope, you hope. Unless their next game takes off, the one that they've been making in secret for how many years? <laughs> yeah, but they also just pretty much said that they're that's ending their first saga the light versus darkness saga is ending yeah. so like they're they're the way that they're wording things is that they're in they're in it they're bungies in into destiny for the long haul will will that be the case in 2026 i have no idea so. yeah <laughs> so, um but. all right so you got rid of one of your obvious games uh i will get rid of uh my my obvious game basically my uh destiny though i wouldn't rank it as like as high as you rank destiny in your life in terms like i think destiny hands down is like your number one uh but we're, we're talking specifically about this generation uh overwatch is definitely one of the like important games for this generation uh and it's the I defining felt, it's the defining hero shooter yes it, like the, the impact it had uh on like the that genre and all the chasers that came out after it uh and how it has a huge fan base even though it's in decline you know it's it's a thing mm -hmm. where like destiny has a declining fan base but it's still huge or mm -hmm. you know like uh, overwatch has that you know thing where people are like oh it's dying but like yeah still destiny has a, has a roller coaster fan base is what they have <laughs> yeah <laughs> why overwatch is just like a steady pool uh, of players uh but yeah i fell off multiplayer games um mm -hmm. after like counter-strike source killzone 2 era uh i mm -hmm. fell off multiplayer games and i mostly played single player games but overwatch just immediately got me with like its characters its uh like diversity of like characters you can play as in terms of like uh you know uh, their race uh their mm -hmm. gender sexuality all that stuff was really interesting to me because everything before that in the competitive shooter scene was just call of duty dude <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it was just like play as the one or two Call of Duty dudes, uh, generic soldier. And Overwatch was like, no, here's weird characters. Here's uh, characters you wouldn't usually see in a competitive shooter. And it was bright, colorful. And that really spoke to me. And I legit spent thousands mm -hmm. of hours of this game from when it came out, which uh, came out. Was it 2016? From 2016 until the summer 20, of 2020. 19? Yeah, 2019, yeah. Uh, is me playing anywhere from 200 to 1,000 hours a year. Mm -hmm. um, and then I finally fell off of it, uh, but just because 
I played way too much of it during quarantine lockdown that once we got out of that, like new consoles were coming out and I just kind of went cold turkey on it. Uh, but it's definitely one of those games. Like, uh, it's rare. I have been able to get so many of my friends to like stick with a game or try out a game. And everyone I knew at a time was playing this game on my friend list. Um, and it got me back into playing multiplayer's multiplayer games with strangers. Uh, even though I'm antisocial still. So most of the time I was just off mic. Uh, and it was just a good team based game. You know, before this, it was like, Killzone, Call of Duty, Counter-Strike, you could just lone wolf the team objective games and have success, and Overwatch was like, no, 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 you actually have to work as a team, and I really appreciated what they were able to do with this, uh, and I can't stress enough the thousands and thousands and thousands of hours I put in. I think there was one year where I hit like 2,000 hours, yeah, probably I mean, the, the thing, second year it came out. The thing that you was that used to be the most fascinating to me about Overwatch is covering it, you know, gaming like we like we are and have been. Is that like com- the community that we were previously a part of, like pushed that game to win awards too? Yeah. Even to the point of where like the staff is like, "What's the big deal about this game?" And you would be in there like, "What are you talking about? Like this is, you know, definitive. Like it won awards, uh, whether it was via write-in or just you know, via ballot stuffing. I don't care. Like, um, it yeah. you know it it did what it needed to do amongst the community of even where the community leader was like, "I don't like this genre." Oh, yeah, it was definitely, it felt like, especially during that time that I was, like, stomping, being like, this is what people are playing today, old, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, it's like, old people deal with the fact that this game is here, uh, and it's popular, Uh, because there's a lot of pushback against it, for whatever reason, Um, but it definitely I I always equated, yeah, I always kind of equated Overwatch to that kid that would come to, like, this is the first example that comes into mind of, like, one of those, like, surprise things, that kid that would come to school, and you're like, he likes Jordans like he's got new Jordans on like and you're like I didn't know that you know because everybody liked Jordan but I mean it was you know like or Jordan shoes yeah. were like the the predecessor you would you know you would you know you would say something or you'd hear something random in conversation of somebody talking about Overwatch or something they did and you're and then it would be one of those things where people played Overwatch that I didn't even know that let alone played video games and then played a competitive shooter because yeah. of the accessibility that Overwatch offered to you it was one of those things where it's almost like you said it, it was Overwatch became that game that it was okay to say that you played that last night versus like, yeah. oh, I play, I was and, playing Call of Duty with my friends. You're like, oh, you're just a Call of Duty, you know, F boy or whatever. And and, and what usually happened, and, and, and that goes to Overwatch's characters. There are so mm-hmm. many diverse characters in here that you could go to any person that plays any genre of video game and you can find a character that they can either relate to on a personal level or relate to in a gameplay mechanic. Mm-hmm. Which is uh, a and, fascinating thing that they accomplished in a multiplayer near faceless world yeah but i got so many people to to play this of being like mm-hmm. let me show you this character named sombra you like uh, yeah. let me show you uh this character uh and just being able to to show people all these different characters and then people able to connect with the character and then just like squeeze out whatever lore they could out of a game that most of the lore is in youtube you know, like game in, in game wise, there's not much lore for you, but people were attracted enough to the the environment and the world and the character that they were seeking gameplay stuff out or not gameplay story stuff out and buying mm-hmm. comics. And yeah, uh, it's just it's just one of those games that it's going to stick with me uh, probably for a long time. Uh, yeah, and it's absolutely. one of those games where oh. I, I, I don't currently have it downloaded to any of my systems because I, you know, I moved over to PS5, but damn, am I tempted every time <laughs> to just like, let me just pop Overwatch in and then I just know I, I can't fall into. Yeah, it's almost like that, that like that, that sandwich shop that you walk by that you know that like that, that, that greasy sandwich is terrible for you and you, you've gone like two months without eating it. But if you know if you go back there and eat it that one time, that it's going to become something you go to every other day. Yeah, and, and I just... I have so many other games to play. Well, you know, and that I, was a current problem. And I envy your ability to do that because when you're like, hey, when, when you decide like, hey, I'm not playing, like then you're just like, I'm not playing. And then for me, like I'll just, you know, I, I've tried multiple times to walk away from Destiny and then a new trailer comes out or somebody I haven't played with in a long time needs help with something. I'm like, all right, I'll come back. And the next thing I know, I come back to help them for like 30 minutes and like four hours are gone and I started doing something else again. <laughs> yeah, I think if they had like an actual co-op or like story mode mm-hmm. for me to return i would probably do it the only thing holding it back is it's just competitive so it's one of those yep. things where it's like that's just enough to keep me like 
I can't actively go back and enjoy the game right away because it'll take me maybe like an hour to get back into mm-hmm. the swing of things and learn the new meta as they constantly tweak this game. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Overwatch is uh, one of my top five games. And also, by the way, we're not specifically ranking these games in any particular yeah. order. We just They're got rid of our <laughs> yeah. We got rid of our we got easy rid of ones. the, the does. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna go with my what I was really thinking about this pretty heavy today, and I was kind of going through my trophy list a little bit, like I do, and I was looking at some things, and I'm gonna bring up my surprise game that I think Michael is gonna like look at me like, what are you talking about? So for me, and again, it's something that it kind of sticks in my head and always has kind of a, a lasting impact um, in terms of things that I remember playing or like you said that I'll be thinking like I'll remember like five years ago, five years later. Um, and surprisingly, I was I have very good memories of this, but it's Watch Dogs 2. OK. Um, never played Watch Dogs 1. Um, Smart man. <laughs> got some time to mess with watchdog 2 at events and got to see some cool stuff and this was also the beginning of ubisoft like trying to take some risks um and starting to bring in like you had mentioned some inc- inclusivity in- inclusivity of characters um you were playing as a, um, a a black protagonist um and it was going against you know antagonist and big you know like the like the election was looming and they were starting to use like your social footprint as as a thing in in the, in the story they didn't push it as far as they as i would have wanted them to but yeah. um you know they, they they never really do but it was just something that and i always equate it to this and i talk about this constantly of like i was playing through the game and i wanted to to see what was going to happen next or i wanted to tackle the next objective because messing with the gadgets was so fun and and messing with the people was so fun and the and the gameplay loop really stuck to me and the story was really interesting and fascinating and the characters were like were were diverse and 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 gave different perspectives of how things should have been handled and and it's it's a game that i um that i platinum which is very rare for me i think i have like six total uh and two of them three of them are destiny so because i've got a platinum in destiny destiny 2 and then destiny 2 ps5 i i got another platinum the other one's like rocket league so it's and it's telltales walking dead and then it's watchdogs so like that watchdogs 2 so that was one of the very telling things to me that i i, I believe i was like 80 or 90 percent done with the trophies and i looked at what i needed to do and they were stupid things like go take 12 photos and ride on top of a train car for like x amount of feet and make a big enough jump and i'm like oh i can do those so i got it but i i wouldn't have gotten it because if i didn't do all the side missions and i wouldn't have done all the side missions if they weren't fun well that that's the thing that i think made watchdogs two significantly better than watchdogs one is the fun factor like, I know that sounds silly, but Watch Dogs 1 just had just a little too much of seriousness. It wasn't full serious, but Watch Dogs 2, it felt like they finally went with that franchise, and you see it a lot more in Legion, of just mm-hmm. like, let's just have fun. Let's just tell, a, like, let, let's let's be funny sometimes. Uh, let's still try and tell, like, a series of stories we want, but it's not going to be, like... 100 percent like doom and gloom like they have Mm -hmm. fun in that and there's like creative things that happen uh which i think they may have lost a little bit going to legion that's why Mm two is like the perfect game of that franchise of they they found like a balance of like let's tell a story uh but also let's just kind of have fun with it uh Mm -hmm. and and use the mechanics like the way they should be used or 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 used in a fun way as opposed to the first game where it's just like you can make the red, li- the green lights red light, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. you know, there's a way more this diverse like gameplay mechanics. driving the remote control car through the vents and, you know, like unlocking things and messing with people and setting traps and trying to like, you could go stealth or you could just go like balls to the wall, like killing everybody. And you weren't like really punished either way. Like it was truly one of those games that felt like you could play how you wanted to play. And as I was going through my trophy list, I'm like, you know what? This is going on the list because I like it and I had fun with it. So. That, that that it is your list it's this specific generation um all right uh so mine i'll also go with um a uh see since i don't have them in order i'm just like looking at them right now which yeah, we'll yeah, talk yeah. about them um i'm gonna go with a uh, plague tale innocence okay uh this was a game uh that i think i liked it way more well me and sarah basically played it as like a co-op game in one day we play it like it's a, it's like a eight to ten hour game, maybe even longer, maybe like close to like 
12 hours and we just played it in one sitting uh like from like 10 in the morning till like midnight uh and as like one of my favorite video game memories like i'm terrible at stealth games uh, but mm-hmm. this had like a stealth element. It had a uh, horror game element with it, and it it worked really well. And it's also one of those games where I'm a little biased uh, towards my my enjoyment of it because it's one of those things that like I saw it at an E3 like two or three years prior to it coming out, and it was one of those games that I saw and I saw or I felt that it had potential, but it was so raw and early the stuff I saw two, three years ago is completely different than what the final game looked, you know, ended up as, you know, the final product. And something about seeing a game that, like, talking to the devs the first year and being like, I think you guys got something here. And then them just being like, oh, thank you so much. That's, like, a really nice thing to say. Uh, But then, you know, seeing the game a year after that and then being like, this game's getting better and better. And then finally, when it finally comes out and just being kind of blown away that like, I saw this game kind of grow over a couple years and it turned out to be a really good game, uh, that I also got to attach personal memories to it. Not just related to the game of just Mm -hmm. like playing that game, you know, in person for like 12 hours, uh, is, is like something I'm going to remember about this game. And the, Other thing that I really enjoyed about this game is I feel like it's a rarity because it's a double A game, uh, which is something that (laughs) kind of died uh, that generation, the PS4 generation. It's like you're either an indie game or a triple A game. And I feel like there's like that, that middle ground that was so big during the PS2 era and a little bit during the PS3 era was gone. Uh, when we got I to think like, we're start, I think we're going to start seeing it again, but it's, I do yeah, too. It's, it's kind of, it was gone. Yeah. Uh, but this was like a fresh of breath air to see like a double a game, uh, be that good. Uh, and I'm interested to see what they do in the future, uh, with, you know, not this franchise cause it's a standalone game, but now that developer is on my radar, mm-hmm. uh, of just like, I want to see what else they're going to do or what else they're capable of going uh and part of that reason is like when a double a studio has a potential of like they're really good they can turn triple a you know they they could maybe do something bigger uh than this is what makes this game like memorable to me Mm -hmm. uh and why i put it on my top for yeah it's always been something i wanted to play but it's just kind of one of those things where i kind of look at it at the dynamic of it i'm like ah I just, I'm not in the mood for that right now, and then I just keep putting it off, and I probably just need to... It's on, I think it's it's on, on Game Xbox Pass. Game Pass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Which I've been so listening to replay it. Yeah, so speaking of games that have, you know, a, a, you know, a, a impact and a memory, um, for me, it, uh, and for my wife and I, um, it's going to be Uncharted 4. Okay. Um, I debated on putting that one. Yeah, so with the culmination of the Nathan Drake story, uh, again, the investment, my wife um, was introduced to Naughty Dog that way in, in watching Last of Us, and she still, like, if you really ask her, she still thinks Uncharted is a better is a better game and a better story than, than, than Last of Us um, in terms of, like, what the, the story arc of how they were able to grow, how, like, how Nathan Drake grew, how Ellie grew, um, not Ellie, um, Elaine, Elena, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and the, the story, the, the, yeah, caring about the characters and caring about the loop and then finding out that he has, you know, like the, the, the children and, and just the, the, the bow that Naughty Dog is able to, to tie on to it and, and to say, Hey, you know, like this is, this is our, this is our box that Nathan Drake lives in. Um, this might not be the box that he stays in, but this is the box that he lives in. Um, and, and for them to, to finish that and that, that, that dynamic. And then just the the things that they were able to accomplish in that game of, you know, like it's still like some of the best, like getting dragged on in the mud on that rope, like behind that Jeep, um, you know, just the stuff that they were able to do. And it's, it's just so cool. And it was so much fun to play those games just, you know, like, Oh, it's like it ripped off Tomb Raider and Tomb Raider ripped off them. I don't care. It's a fun game that I know that I can jump to the yellow pipe and climb up. <laughs> and the shooting and, mechanics are okay. <laughs> yeah. 
but that was again like the the gameplay was like you know the gameplay was okay the the it the the story was was made it what is what made it fun yeah the, story the, the, story the is character. keen for me and yeah. that naughty dog knows how to do story and characters uh so i, I understand why you'd want to put that on the list yeah. uh it's funny. Uh, I was talking about this with a coworker. How, like, as as we get older, we're more focused on story than gameplay. I don't know if you feel like that, but definitely with like the Naughty Dog games, mm-hmm. I feel like I will cut them so much slack on like their shooting mechanics and all that stuff because of how good the story is and how good the characters are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. What's next for did you? Did you? Oh no! But did you get into the multiplayer? at all for no i, feel I like mean i think i remember playing two two or threes multiplayer but it, and again those games were kind of like they were out when i wasn't into multiplayer as much and then i kind of just felt like it like if you weren't playing was it two that had multiplayer first yeah yeah if you didn't know what was going on like if you hadn't played uncharted 2 multiplayer like i felt like you were immediately behind the ball at three and then did four had it too yeah four had multiplayer yeah it okay. totally had yeah. multiplayer mode uh, they added emotes and all that stuff try to kind of make it more modern but i don't know if it were it's still fun and it's probably still active uh we should probably hop on one day just to, yeah it might be it's, it's included out. with lost legacy oh uh ah. uh <laughs> Okay, uh, my next one, which I, Dave can talk a little bit about it, but technically I think it would be disqualified because he played the remastered version, uh, Spider-Man. Uh, it's on my from... list. It, it, it was. I, I debated about it, yes, I, but I, it's still a PS4 game. <laughs> no, you played with uh, baby-faced <laughs> Peter Parker, so I don't know if you can count that. Uh, but yeah, Spider-Man is on my list, so I kind of have a feeling we might have one more game in common, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. What can you say about Spider-Man? This was damn near perfect uh, for mm-hmm. me as uh, like a comic book nerd. It had so much in there. It's like Insomniac got to run wild with their, they got to create their own lore, but they mm-hmm. reference and use so much of the established lore that it's just, it's just filled to the brim with Easter eggs. They made, you know, like the cheesy thing that you can go to every review, probably even my review, if you can still find it uh of just you know when every review is like this game makes you really feel like spider-man and you know what damn it it does <laughs> did you ever have the desire to swing through new york city well, now you can yeah exactly <laughs> but you know what it deserves those yeah. cheesy cliche uh reviewer like it's words. one of the only games that i found myself like you know what i'm gonna do all these stupid challenges because i think that suit looks cool yeah and i won't fast travel because it's way more fun to just swing around the city uh they it did such a good job like the gameplay is great the story is great this is this to me is like a perfect game uh with how they're able to achieve everything even though i played the one with the weird peter parker face because i think the (laughs) old face is weirder than the new face but that's yeah i mean it's it's the same thing though like i've like like for me it was like I wanted to get home and I wanted to see what was going to happen next or I wanted to, 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 to do the next thing in the game or get to the next cutscene, or, you know, do the next battle. And then on the way there, I'm like, oh, somebody's like truck is getting stolen. I'm going to go help them. And like, oh, trickster things over here. And the, you know, like, oh, there's a backpack there and there's like an Osborne. And it's like next. And again, it's like, all right, it's eight o'clock. I can get like, you know one or two story beats done and next thing you know it's 11 30 at night and you haven't even done one story beat because you picked up a backpack and then did a combat training and then (laughs) but they made everything like just picking up the backpack there was a little bit of story every time you picked up like a little bit of establish establishing the lore with everything you did was in service of the world and story yeah, the random phone call to MJ or the random phone call to Aunt yeah. May and then to get to get interrupted by you doing a crime and then having enough writing and dialogue in there to go, hey, sorry, we got disconnected, but tell me what you were telling me about. And I'm like, huh. Like, just... that, that was one of those things where I forgot the game did that so many times to where like if I would get a phone call, I would just stop what I was doing or I would continue swinging away from my objective just so they can finish the phone call and get there. Uh, but yeah, the the, the acting is phenomenal uh 
I can't wait for the sequels. I mean, Miles is is, is its own thing, mm-hmm. and uh, Miles is great, and there's just so much they can do, and they really push the PS4. Uh, I mm-hmm. know you 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 kind of played the remaster on PS5, and then you went back to look at it on PS4, and you're like, "Oh, this is a little rough." Uh, but at the time, yeah, 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 this was an amazing ps4 game that pushed yeah yeah that they pushed as the fast, PS4. as fast as he was moving through the city and it, like you weren't seeing like the pop in and stuff like that like there there was some things and the only reason i know that only reason i felt like it looked rough is because i got to i got to drive the porsche and then yeah, yeah i was driving the porsche version and somebody else had a you know a not the Porsche. <laughs> so yeah. And I, I got in the car after I'd already been in the better, faster car. So, uh, yeah. but I didn't hold it against it. And it is on my list um, because it technically was a PS4 game that I am ashamed that I didn't play sooner, but I'm ashamed that I didn't play it sooner. But at the same time, I got to experience, I got to do what, you know, people always talk about that, you know, that you, that you wish you could have done. Like, like, to be able to play the whole, like go back and play Uncharted one, you know, like on a PS five or something like that as an example and get to experience that, that story arc for the first time. People yeah. are like, I want to feel like that again. And I got to feel like that with Spider-Man on the better version. Yeah. Like the r- six to full 60 frames, yeah. all, all that stuff. So I got to experience what you experienced with better graphics and yeah. better visuals and better, just better. And, you know, and then there's people that are just like, oh, damn, like, you know, like the it, we you know, pulling, you know, breaking the fourth wall for a second. I want to go back and play Final Fantasy seven remake. Guess what? I ain't doing it because it's going to look so much better in June. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I was looking at the same thing. Uh, me and Sarah are looking at what game to play next after we play Final Fantasy 13. Uh, we're waiting because uh, we started yeah. seven and then we stopped yep, like same. four hours in. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to wait till June. so i mean it's and just to to experience it for the first time like that it's just it's so cool so um but th- that's a th- you you kind of took one of mine you didn't take it but um i think that you and i have the same last one if i had to guess so i want you to do your your second to last one okay uh so my second to last one is uh what remains of edith finch okay uh this is this is another one of those like perfect games for me. Uh, it, it's a it's a it's smaller game. It's a game you can play in like less than probably four hours. Maybe it's like a two hour game in total. Uh, but this is one of those games that the the ability for this game to tell a story through a house through the the characters in completely different ways, how it can transform uh the the environment and just like everything about this game i can't even put into words this game because this game just immediately a bunch of memories from the game come up it's one of those games i played multiple times uh there's so many little stories in this but like the the point of the game is you're you're exploring a house and each time you go into someone's room the game just teleports you to like almost like a completely different game or uh, a completely different time period and you get to see like the last moments of that person's life uh from sometimes very uh like fantastical like magical like eyes you know like it's not just oh here's a person's death it's like no here's what the person was feeling mentally or here's where their imagination took them uh before tragedy struck and this game is one of those ones where when every couple years when someone is like our video games art our video games on par with uh movies and televisions for storytelling edith finch is one of those ones that i Mm -hmm. immediately think of of like yes games are art uh video games can tell a good story they can be a vehicle uh for people to feel emotions and this game just is able to achieve all of that. This game is like a perfect example of what can be accomplished in video games. Uh, if you want to tell a compelling story. Uh, and it's one of those ones I highly recommend it. It's, it's a, it's a quick playthrough. Uh, there's the gameplay. You're, you're kind of just going through the motions. It's more of like an interactive walking simulator. If you want to like be a dick about it in terms of describing it, but it doesn't matter. Cause like, the story is what's important and 
the gameplay is just a vehicle to get you through the story. And this is a game that I've played multiple times. I'll probably play it a two or three times before the end of this year. Because uh, it's just one of those games that like... Nice. I, I have it downloaded on my Xbox. I have it downloaded on my PlayStation. Just in case I ever want to play it again on either one of those, I just have it available at any given point without having to wait for the download. And I think there's a physical edition of this game, which I will probably end up picking up. Uh, just so I can put it on a shelf and be like, I own that game. All right, very cool. All right, uh, last one on my list. Um, and if I have to guess, I think this is yours as well. But for me, it's got a war. Oh, no. Nope. No? Okay. Nope. Um, so God of War, especially for me, um, having an older son who's in his 20s now, early 20s, and then having a younger son who's uh, five um the the kratos and atreus story um kind of stuck home a little bit you know for me as in terms of like a father-son thing and of uh, trying to figure out you know the, the journey that they're on together to honor their mother um and uh god of war as a franchise was always something that i did i did have some you know some fun with um playing them in uh chunks uh like out of war one two and three is uh playing them all around the same time um and you know on the ps3 when i you know because i was late to the to the single player gaming party for a little while there like i said i was playing a lot of sports games and this the story but then just the the new direction they took with it and and the the beauty that the game was and and how good it felt to throw the axe and um just from a gameplay mechanical standpoint of uh it's just it it was just a fascinating story and it it's probably the one of the games that has it's a very very significant impact on me as a father um you know just to to try to to do what you think is right but to protect your family um it was just like super fascinating to me and like that's why the the next one's like i i, I can't wait to see where, where where it goes but to see and and all the 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 connection that I, is as corny or as dumb as it sounds, but the connection I kind of felt like with Corey Barlog a little bit as he was talking about him when he left Sony Santa Monica and, uh, and then he came back and he had, and then when he came back, he had, he was a father then. And the people that had been developing God of War had families by that time that they were, they were developing this one. So it was definitely like a, a love letter to people and, and having, you know, and, and having a family and having you know relationships and having significant others in your lives. And, and, and it's not just about you anymore. Yeah, that, that, that is definitely one of the, be the, the, the biggest parts of what makes that story great. Uh, I also think in a, le a, a less serious note, uh, it made Kratos likable it humanized mm -hmm. kratos kratos before this is just a grunt he yeah he's he's just an anger machine like he has one dimension and it's just anger and when they first were talking about this game i'm just like how are they gonna make kratos like this character with like emotions and feelings like we've seen kratos he beats up gods and has sex with ladies in hot tubs when he breaks down a wall and spot I mean, you, you know, had a like, mechanic in one of the games where you pushed l3 and r3 and like dug your fingers into somebody's eyes yeah like <laughs> it, how are they going to do this thing and they found a way to humanize kratos tell a compelling story but also keep the core kind of mechanics mm -hmm. that people from those previous games would love it's old enough to do this and if you're listening to this i'm sorry but going to get the blades was one of the coolest moments that i've had in a, in a game i was always waiting for those moments uh, or for that moment and i when you get that cut even though you know exactly what's gonna happen mm -hmm. like i don't think it's a surprise or at least for me it wasn't a surprise he was getting the blades when it, it was like oh i need to go back to the house and get something moment i knew mm -hmm. what he was doing but i was still so excited mm -hmm. and they they just made that that scene just iconic and i think there are multiple scenes from that game or moment uh moments that i think if we were to make a top 10 god of war moments from all the games i think maybe like five of those moments <laughs> or more are from that game you know like mm -hmm. of all, all like what is it three god of wars and ascension and then like two mm -hmm. psp games Maybe there's like three moments in all those games that would make a top 10 <laughs> God of War mm -hmm. uh, franchise moments because there's just so many amazing things in that. 
And I usually hate games with a character that has to follow you. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed such a good job. They did such a good job. It's like, because that was always the concern. Is it going to be a glorified escort mission? And it's like, like, yeah, you're escorting, but it wasn't, it, it it just felt, it just felt different. Yeah. Um, (laughs) All right, uh, so my last one, which is, I'm surprised you didn't think I would pick this, uh, Last of Us Part Two. See, um, I, was deba- I was debating about putting it on my list, but the, the thing that came down to it for me was that the first one was better. See, for me, I think the second one is significantly better, um, but I think it just, I was more involved in Ellie's story than I was with Joel's story. Um, and see, I think, okay, so like the dynamic that you and I have is that's the difference between, and I'm not demeaning you when I say this, but that's me being a dad. Yeah, it's you being old and me being young uh, <laughs> is also a factor. Because um, you're only like seven years older than me or whatever, but you also are a dad, so I add like an extra yeah. five years yeah, to that. I get it. I get it. Yeah, you know, good, so, so like uh, when you when you when you look at it, I can totally see why you'd like the Joel story. Uh, Could you imagine and, but, having a 14 year old right now? Hell no. That's I, how old Jonathan was when I was 30 years old. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, to me, like Joel was he he was a good character in the first game. Like mm-hmm. not not his actual character but like (laughs) as a developed thing in a video game interesting but i felt like he was just a little too one-dimensional he was almost kratos like in terms of Mm -hmm. it you know it towards the end he starts to develop feelings but it was still like oh you're a son of a bitch ellie i just see her go through so many different emotions in uh part two that i just immediately just felt every one of her emotions because of what happens to her and what happens to the people she loves yeah uh, definitely what they what they did was a it was a huge risk um what they did at the beginning or into um yeah. was it was a huge risk for the foundation that looked like that they were building um and it, but and i think that's again like i think that's just a different you, you having an attachment to the the childlike character. I don't want to, I don't, you know, and, and me having a, 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 um, an attachment to the parental like figure, which ironically into Ellie starts to build that parental like character. Yeah. Uh, also, um, I'm still trying to be vaguely respectful speaking in this. I don't want to ruin it for anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have a spoiler cast if anyone wants to hear our three-hour thoughts uh, on it, which was our first spoiler cast, which also kind of puts this game kind of on like a generational yeah. thing for me because uh, I'm sentimental, Dave. Uh, but I also just credit this game with what they were able to do with Abby in terms of like taking the risk of introducing someone like Abby making you play mm-hmm. someone like Abby and then also changing the player's idea or thoughts on Ellie. I know it didn't work for everybody, but or Abby, uh, them making Abby a compelling character who you're actually mm-hmm. rooting for, who's going against everything you had done previously in the game is like an amazing accomplishment to me. And then the gameplay is better than two or the two's gameplay is better yes, than one. Yes. Yeah. So that pushes it just over the edge for me is because it does play significantly better than the first game did as it should. Yeah, the mean, sequel should uh, always be in better. Uh, part, part two was definitely at its core, the better game. Part one, I think was a better story. Um, I think that for me, if Naughty Dog gets the opportunity to, t- to continue this story, and I really only have faith that Naughty Dog can do it, three or whatever they would would or wouldn't call it would be the one that would have the that, that I think would have the, the, the massive significant in- impact on me. Because if I had to guess, it might get to the point of where Ellie is truly a parent, which... Yeah you know and you know something is happening with that to where i think that that you would see both of those story arcs just slammed together like and they would yeah. come they would they would get just like they would have this massive collision together of what the the parts that you love about ellie and the parts that i loved about joel in the first one and just to see that would be fantastic and it, it probably should have been on my list um but i was looking at you know 
some of it's just more recent. Like Spider Man, just uh, I take guess technically I did play it on PS Five. So if it you know if you want to push it out, then Last of Us would be there. Uh, yeah. Last of Us Part Two would be there. Um, I just had I found myself having more. I found myself having more fun with Spider-Man than Last of Us. I played Last of Us because I wanted to know what happened. Um, well, Last of Us also had like an emotional drain on most people. Even if you <laughs> don't think it did, it fucking did. Because yeah. like, you're, you're pretty good at like separating yourself from a game. But <laughs> there had to be moments when you're playing that game, and I know we've talked about it, uh, where you're just, there's a little bit of a dread you know, in some yeah. of the moments in that game. And that might not be a fun memory uh, for some of the things that happen in that game or what it makes you do. So I could see why this would slip out of someone's vibe, but I just give me all the emotions, throw all of that <laughs> shit at me uh, and I'll take it. That's why Edith Finch is like one of my, <laughs> is on my list. It's uh, fascinating I, how I, how I can compartmentalize media, but I have a hard time compart- com- compartmentalizing a lot of other things. But yet you cried when they traded Matt, Stafford or something. To, uh, from I there. didn't cry. Yeah, you did. I. I no, heard. I did not. Oh my god. You you had your jersey and you like folded it nice and <laughs> <laughs> you folded it into a nice little square and then uh-huh. just threw it away uh-huh. or did whatever your football people do. Uh huh. Just like when your White Sox got their ass kicked in the playoffs. But I didn't cry. <laughs> I threatened <laughs> I run Taria on Twitter like a normal person. Oh my god. Yeah, normal. <laughs> All right. So um obviously we would love to hear what your game of generation was, whether it was on a PC, on an Xbox, um any of those things. I guess like just quickly, I know you you had mentioned a couple of like honorable mentions. Um I wa- I personally want to throw like a VR game in there. Like I had a great time with the, the in terms of VR, the thing that surprised me the most with VR, I think, uh, and you you got to witness this firsthand with my surprise was the Batman Arkham VR game. Yeah, um, which isn't even like considered like a crazy one, but it was a good tech showcase. Yeah, just the depth that was there, like after like yeah. afterwards, I'm like, wow, this is more than just like putting the suit on. So that really kind of like surprised me and kind of like uh, kind of established VR as a platform that I would that I wanted and. I sadly I feel like that nobody really did that great of a job of capitalizing on that well enough. Yeah. Um at least not to me. And then the other VR one that I would say that I really enjoyed and I want the rest of it it was Moss. Yeah, they just recently celebrated an anniversary which made mm-hmm. me like like man, they should really expand on that. Like that was fantastic. Like that was like super cool storytelling in a VR world. Like and I was like, "Okay, cool, there's more." And there's not. <laughs> no. Yeah, an honorable mention that I have was Life is Strange, but technically mm. it was on PS3 as well, and I was just like, let me not put a game that was on both PS3 and PS4, but Life is Strange is definitely one of those motion of story games uh, that will stick with me forever, and it's one of those ones where if you've ever played a game where you wish you can forget you played it so you can experience it again for the first time, uh, mm-hmm. that's what mm-hmm. Life is Strange to me. It's like a puzzle game where you don't want to play the puzzle game again because you know all the, how, to, how to solve all the puzzles. Uh, that is just one of those ones where I wish I can play that again for the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then God of War was one of my honorable mentions because God of War was just hanging on there. Uh, yeah, but, and I just think if I'm going, if I'm comparing God of War and Last of Us, like God of War wins, like for me. Yeah. Um, you know, like obviously Destiny's there. Watch Dogs, I just had a blast playing. Watch Dogs 2, I just I just had a fantastic time playing it. Probably like if you really like, you know, like made me f- number a list and I had to pick between like and I uh, you know, if it's I had to pick pick between Watch Dogs and in Last of Us, like Last of Us wins. But, mm-hmm. you know, like Last of Us Part 2, like but from a conversational standpoint, I it was important for me to have different genres and different dynamics and different stories in my in my list like it's like oh last of us one last of us two uncharted like i didn't want it to be my best naughty dog games well then we would have had like three games on the list that are the same I yeah believe. so no two but um, yeah but we would love to hear what uh, your game of the generation was uh whether it's on xbox uh one on pc on switch on wii u wii u i guess yeah <laughs> so, um but uh, please, you know, leave comments in the Patreon post. Uh, let us know on Twitter, um, in the Facebook group, any of those things. Those should be all in the in the show notes you have on here. 
again, please send us feedback and topics um, as those are always, always appreciated. Um, and they are used, uh, they, we, we would obviously use them. Um, like I said, there's a, there's, there's, there's a few of you, but you, you carry a, a, a mighty large voice in our, in our uh, content for Patreon. And we would love to, to see that as well as any other feedback that you'd like to give us on our Patreon is always appreciated. And I hope everyone uh, has a great month um, as we still need a topic for March. So please let us know. I don't know. Mighty like, Ducks. Anything else? Mighty uh, Ducks. No. I really wanted an excuse to rewatch the Mighty Ducks trilogy. We could do like a uh, whole Wanda. We could do like a whole Wanda Vision breakdown too. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I need. I might to just that might just make a it. great non Patreon episode though. Yeah, that might be a, a non Patreon. <laughs> That's why I'm the Mighty Ducks. Everyone likes the Mighty Ducks. We rewatch those movies, except maybe the third one. Well, the third one has its moment they, with the yeah. ants. Depends on. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see how much of an impact it has on the show. <laughs> Ah, uh, man, me and my friend have a spec script that we started the right for a Mighty Ducks reboot, and we we're very sad that a TV show was made all these years later. <laughs> I have ideas for where I wanted to go, and it's not going to do it. Uh, no, I don't really have anything else, and I got to not keep Dave up, because it's like 12.40 ah, over it's there. It's good. It's all good. I'm off tomorrow, so. I'm not. I have to wake up in six hours. <laughs> he set the time for this one, just for the record. So. I'm not complaining. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a great month. Thank you again so much for your support on Patreon. We appreciate it, and we uh, we truly love you for it. See ya, and thank you.